So what I will be doing today is trying to give you a map of the future. And in this map of the future, I'm going to use a group of the verses of the Qur'an and uh, I'm going to use some of the sayings of the Prophet ﷺ. So I'm, I hope, inshallah, I'm able to explain what I want to really explain today. I want to start off with, I think, one of the most profound verses of the Qur'an. It is ayah number 24 of Surah Yunus. Ayah number, go home and read this one verse. And it will put the in, what is going to happen in history, in this earth, in, in the lifetime of this earth, into perspective. And I'm connecting this with Sutul Kahf, as you will see. Allah says in ayah number 24 of Sutul Yunus, إِنَّمَا مَثَلُ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا Allah says the example of this life is, is Allah repeats this, but with here there is a twist. <laughs> the example of this life is like the rain that falls from the sky. Then what happens? <laughs> and then, because when the rain comes down, what happens? The nabatat, the plants, the grow, the vegetation comes out. And what happens as a result, when the vegetation comes out, who eats from it? And the people eat from it, and the, the cattle, they eat from it. The animals, they eat from the, from, the, from the things that grow from the earth. And this is how the world will be until an event takes place, because the pre-industrial societies, they were economies based upon <coughs> farming. The Ottoman Empire, the Mughal Empire, the Umayyad Empire, the Abbasid Empire, and all the history before that, all the economies were based upon what? The agriculture. So then Allah says, but this is what's going to happen hatta, until, until, until the earth brings out its ornaments and its treasures. From the earth will come out its ornaments and its treasures. And you may say, what is the Quran talking about? Is it really talking about oil and the copper and the metal? and the diamonds, and all the other things that we take out of it. Is it really talking about that? So then we continue with the verse of the Qur'an. Then Allah says, إِنَّمَا مَثَلُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا كَمَا إِنْ أَنزَلْنَاهُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ فَاخْتَلَتَ بِهِ نَبَاتُ الْأَرْضِ مِمَّا يَعْكُلُ النَّاسِ وَالْأَنْعَامِ حَتَّى إِذَا أَخَذَتِ الْأَرْضُ زُحْرُفُهَا وَزُيِّنَتْ And with the things that come out of the earth, it becomes zina. Like the main, one of the main themes to have is Zinatul Hayat al Dunya, the beauty, the dazzling beauty of the world. And with the things that come out of the world, Yizuyinat, and then everything is made so beautiful. Especially the cities are made so beautiful. And the people, they start thinking, we have control over everything. 
وَذَنَّ أَهْلُهَا And the people who have control over the things that come out of the earth, they begin to think we have control over everything. Are you following me? Yeah. So you have an agrarian society until حَرُوف شَرْط Hatta is حَرُوف شَرْط Until this happens, the things will then when the earth brings out its treasures and when the earth brings out its treasures the economy will no longer be based upon agriculture only but will be primarily based upon the things that come out of the earth, the raw material and the industrial age from there where it began to where we are now and then so Yirad is made so beautiful and ظَنَّ أَهْلُهَا أَنَّهُمْ قَادِرُونَ عَلَيْهَا and the people thought we have control over it all they think they will think, they are thinking. Then Allah says, حَتَّى إِذَا أَخَذَتِ الْأَرْضُ زُحْرُفُهَا وَزُيِّنَتْ وَذَنَّ أَهْلُهَا أَنَّهُمْ قَادِرُونَ عَلَيْهَا And then Allah says, what will happen as man becomes powerful and becomes in control of everything on earth, at that time, something will happen that will diminish everything into Rubbish. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, وَزُيِّنَتْ وَذَنَّ أَهْلُهَا أَنَّهُمْ قَادِرُونَ عَلَيْهَا آتَاهَ أَمْرُنَا لَيْلًا أَوْ نَهَارًا Then our command will come in one day. One side of the earth will be day, the other side will be night. And then when Allah's command comes, what will happen? وَذَنَّ أَهْلُهَا أَنَّهُمْ قَادِرُونَ عَلَيْهَا آتَاهَ أَمْرُنَا لَيْلًا أَوْ نَهَارًا فَجَعَلْنَاهَ حَصِيدًا we will make it like there was nothing there. There was the harvest has been taken away. Like there was no yesterday. You will go back to the stone age, and there will be no ability to take out and have control of the raw materials from the earth anymore. How will that happen? There are many, many scenarios. Everything from a nuclear war, which the Quran points to to environmental disaster, to a solar... It could be a lot of things, but something Allah will do something that man will have the peak of technology and power and then it will all come crumbling down. And when this house of cards, especially paper money, this paper money is already on the brink of its death. And so when the paper money finally comes down, <coughs> And a new economy is put in its place, which I'm not going to go into today, what that new economy will be. So, what does the Qur'an tell us to do? See, Ashab al Kahf, they were a people that, because they were terrorized in the city. Do you know the Ashab al Kahf, the seven sleepers? These people were nobility of their time. They were sons of the noble people of the city. And they had, every, they had everything of dunya. But when they accepted their deen, when they accepted Islam, they were terrorized, and they could no longer live in that city. And then they had to find a cave. And they had to find a cave to live outside the city, outside the grid. This is what Muslims will have to do when everything comes coming down. If you don't have a cave to be in, then you're going to have one of the. You're going to have only one choice, two choices. Either you protect your Islam and find a cave to be in, which I'll explain to you what I mean by that. Or second is you have to give in to the rules of the new society, the new system, whatever it will be. When this house of card falls, if you're not ready and prepared, you're going to have to make a choice. Am I going to be part of this system, or am I going to be outside the grid? And we will come back to a time where the only wealth that we would have is our land, is our... If you read the Ahadith of the Prophet, it's very clear. The end time wars are not machine guns. The end time wars are swords. The end time wars, the Prophet said the greatest wealth a mu'min will have will be his sheep that he will take to the mountains. There are many Ahadiths when the, the, the fitna of the Jan will come, the Muslims will have to go to the mountains. In fact, there is a companion of the Prophet ﷺ that asked the Prophet this question in Sahih Bukhari in Kitab al a very interesting saying of the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet said that Hudayfa radiallahu anhu says, كان الناس يسألون رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عن الخير وكنت أسأله عن الشر مخافة أن يدركني 
the people used to ask the Prophet about the good things, and I asked the Prophet about the evil things that would come to us because I feared that it would come over me. And this hadith continues until he says, the Prophet tells them that towards the end, it will, there will be shar again, there will be evil again. And he said, Sif hum lana, who will be these people that will bring evil to us? Who will they be? And he said, the Prophet said, hum min jildatuna wa ansinatuna. They will be a people who will have our skin and will talk our language. And they will be people that will be calling to the hellfire. On the, they will be on the doors of the hellfire calling people in. So then the companion, the Prophet says, وسلم, What do you want me to do if this is the situation? If the Prophet says, Then find the Muslims and join the Muslims and their Imam. Meaning, that they would have to make a choice between if they're going to be part of this new system that will be created or if they're going to be with the Muslims living in the nowhere land or living in the low technology, low level of sustain their sustainability but land, crops, cattle, you're living in that and then you're looking at the cities made by the Dajjal with the beauty that used to, you, rem you, you would remember the beauty of the cities. Oh, you know, we don't have those TVs anymore, and we don't have those phones, and they have them there. And you would be living in low tech. That's the choice you'd have to make. And this is why Stulkahaf, when you had to leave them, you had to do it. or Itizal means to leave, to separate them yourself from the, from, from the, from the grid. You would have to come off the grid. That's the only way to survive when this economy falls down. So the question for you practically is, have you invested in something where you can take yourself, your family to save your family? At that time when this whole, it doesn't matter if you're living in Lahore. When the paper money falls, Pakistani currency will be nothing. You could be, it doesn't matter if you're in Africa, when the, when the dollar falls, everything will fall. It's just one currency, when it falls, everything will fall. And this is not if it's going to happen. It's, it's not, oh, is this going to really happen? It's a matter of when it will happen. It's not if it will happen. It's when it will happen. And the Prophet says, and not only I'm saying this as a Muslim scholar, but these are things the economists have said over and over and over again. And there are two things that will be needed to be able to make that bold move that you want to be with the Muslims and not be part of the system of the Dajjal. Number one is the man of the garden. The man who had the two gardens, right? And he had, in the middle of his Jannat min A'nab, he had, you know, the most uh, delicate and you can say the most, uh, out of all the fruits, the one that is the most considered precious is the grapes. So this man has a garden of grapes and then he has a garden of dates around, garden, uh, date trees are very strong. And so date trees are protecting the grapes in the middle. And then he has a river, a self-irrigation system within this. And this person has this garden and he says, Ma alunnu an I don't think my garden will ever go anywhere. I got it all here. And then we know his garden is destroyed. And, and, and the thing is, is this, is that if you're not able to leave your garden of dunya to go to the cave, you won't be able to survive. You will, be, you will be cut by the system of Dajjal. You, will, you would have bought to the system of Dajjal. And the second thing is the story of Musa and Khidr. And Musa and Khidr is the story of being able to see realities instead of appearances. Could you see the truth? Could you see it coming when it was coming? And I'm telling you that it is coming. It's, not, it's only a matter of when all of this will happen. But we're coming to the end of the petrodollar currency system and what the Quran tells us that that what uh, the when the raw material of the earth comes out and Zuyinat makes everything beautiful at that time then after some time all of that system will collapse and it, it's not sustainable no matter how you look at it look how long can oil last how long can oil last there's you know have a 10 billion people right Fresh water is in danger. I don't know if you, the wars of the future are not even going to be over oil. They're going to be over water. Less than out of the NASA just came out with new images that out of the three percent fresh water that we have to survive, two percent of it is in danger. And you know what's so interesting about that? I'll share with you very, something very interesting. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran says, Ma'am Mubaraka. Water is what? Mubaraka. Water from the sky is what? Baraka. Water from the sky has what? Baraka. You should learn to save the water that comes from the sky because it has baraka. What is so interesting, Surah Al Mulk, you all read Surah Al Mulk. Surah Al Mulk starts with baraka. Tabaraka alladhi bi yadihi al mulk. Blessed is the one in whose hands is the sovereignty. He is the one who has the baraka. Right? And Surah Al Mulk ends with what? Fa in asbaha ma'ukum ghawra. What will you do when the water just dissipates? Which is what's happening in the world today. Lakes are drying up all over the world. Just search it on the internet. You'll see it. And so, ma'am mubaraka, there is baraka from Allah on earth, on earth, as long as the rainwater is coming and everything is natural. But like Sultan Mulk says, the baraka, Allah is tabaraka, He has baraka. But if you don't do istighfar, if you don't do dhikr of Allah, you know, Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam gave the secret to this. He said, he said, I said to my people, Nuh والسلام, says, I said to my people, Seek forgiveness from Allah because He's, he's Ghaffar, He will forgive you. And what will happen as a result? He will bring down from the sky rain for you. But if you don't do istighfar, you don't follow Islam, you compromise all of Islam. And you have low self-esteem, you're Muslim. And you don't do dhikr of Allah. وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ أَنْ ذِكْرِي Whoever stays away from my dhikr. Then these resources, the world, you know, it's not just about global warming. The Prophet said something interesting. The Prophet said, when the sins will increase, the sun will get hotter. I mean, the heat in the world will increase, this is what the Prophet said. When the sins will increase, the world's temperature will increase. This, the Prophet said this. It's not global warming, ju warming, war warming just because we're destroying the environment. It is global.